Zero accounting software. Bill with inventory connected to purchase order PO. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We started up in a prior presentation. I'm going to zoom in a bit by holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel, currently at 175% zoom in. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We will be opening the demo file, but before we do, I'm just going to reset the data so we're all at the same point starting out. That should reset the data, open up the company file. I'm then going to close out this item. We're going to open up the major two financial statement reports in new tabs as we do every time. Right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating it. I'm going to right click on the tab up top again, duplicate it again. Go to the middle tab, which should be done thinking now in the accounting dropdown in the reports. We want to see the balance sheet report. And then as that's opening, I'm going to go to the tab to the right and go to the accounting dropdown again, reports again. But this time we want the income statement, the P&L, the profit and the loss. And then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. I'm just going to change the date and bring this up on a custom date to 2022 and the end of 2022 i'm going to update that run it there we go so now let's go back to the first tab we're going to enter a bill form so if i hit the drop down we have a bill but specifically we want to enter the bill related to the purchase order so we talked about the purchase order in a prior presentation that would only be used in the event that you're tracking inventory and you have the capacity to order the inventory before paying it. So just a quick recap on that. If I go to the flow chart, note that we're talking about basically the purchasing side of things. So at the end of the process, we expect money to be going out. In this case, for the purchase of physical things, for the purchase of the inventory. So we're going to then have the purchase order at the start of the process, noting that that's different than when we purchase things individually online, for example, from Amazon or something like that, where we pay for something when we buy it. That's not the case uh, here because we're saying that we have the leverage in order to order it before we actually pay for it. That's what the purchase order does. Therefore, there's no financial transaction with regards to the purchase order. We're ordering like a thousand goods of whatever. We imagine then they're shipped to us with a bill then we're going to enter the bill which will record the inventory and the accounts payable at that point in time so let's go back on over and see what that looks like i'm just going to recreate a purchase order for our so we can track this again so i'm going to say let's make a purchase order just to track this ourselves i'm going to make it for aaa so it's up top for the vendor or supplier december 1st i'll just keep that as the date Keep that the same reference standard. That's good. US dollars looks good. I'm not going to have any tax applied to it. The item, remember that they have a couple different items here. If I choose the first one here, it's going to the cost of goods sold. I want one that's going to inventory so because that'll be a little bit more complex, I believe. So I'm going to choose this item, which has inventory related to it. And then we've got the amount down here. It looks like this should have an impact on the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, but it does not because it's just a request. It's kind of like an estimate that you do before an invoice, right? Once we uh, follow through with it with a bill and we get the stuff and a bill, then we possibly will use the purchase order to construct the, the bill. Uh, so let's go ahead and approve it. So I'm not gonna go through it. You got the options. We went through the options last time. I'm just gonna go right to the approval button here and let's see what that did. Now let's imagine that we've got the item that we ordered here. I can't, these t-shirts, we got the t-shirt, <laughs> the one t-shirt that we ordered, 
probably wouldn't be able to order one with a purchase order, you know, but in any case, we got the one t-shirt in a box. It came with a bill attached to it. So if that happened, we could do a couple different ways to go through the next process. We could to go to the business dropdown and go to the uh, purchase orders, tracking our purchase orders. So we've got the all, we've got the drafts awaiting approval. We put ours right to the approved area. So there we have our approved purchase order. We could go in here and check it off and then possibly uh, copy to a bill. So I could copy it to a bill this way. If I purchased it for a specific person, I might also copy it to an invoice because maybe I purchased a custom t-shirt that I want to turn around and sell at this point in time. But typically you'd be purchasing it and connecting it to the bill this way, or you know, I could, uh, I could just uh, select that first item here, go into it, and then in the option up top, we also have the same thing, copy to a bill, right? I can copy to the bill here, or the, the next option is you could go to the drop down and create a bill, <laughs> and then just type in the vendor or supplier of AAA, whatever, and it'll give you the pop-up saying, hey, there's a PO related to this copy line. So I'm gonna say, yeah, let's do it. Mark mark as build. So now once I, once I populate the bill with the purchase order, you would expect we would want to mark the purchase order as having been billed because it's been completed. Unless there's something weird going on, you're making a bill even though you haven't completed the purchase order. So the purchase order will not st stay and remain open. So I'm gonna say, okay. So now it's populating our bill with the information from the purchase order. So I just pulled it over, AAA, there's the date, uh, the due date of the bill that, that we might have to, that's you know when we're gonna have to pay the bill. And then uh, the total US dollars, we're gonna say no tax on it, pulled in the items and that looks good. Now this is actually gonna record a transaction when we make the bill. What's it gonna do? Well, it's a bill. We've talked about a bill before. It's gonna increase the accounts payable. That's what a bill does. And the other side is gonna go and be driven by the item. Notice the item is the thing that's driving the fact that it's gonna go to this inventory account. Note that I can't even change this inventory account. I can change these other fields if I want to, but I can't change the inventory account. In part, you would think the system is set up that way so that the item can be tracked on a perpetual inventory system within the system. So you have to set up the items in order to do that. We'll talk more about items in future presentations, but just be aware that that's an underlying thing that needs to be set up in order to track the inventory that we wanna mention here. So it's also gonna track the sub ledger for the item. So let's go ahead and approve it and see what that does. So we'll go ahead and approve it. So then it's been approved so now let's just double check the purchase order side of things. If I go into the purchase orders, I can say, okay, the approved purchase orders, it's been moved from there to the build items, meaning it's now been billed. The purchase order has not created any financial transaction to the financial statements, but the bill we created from the purchase order has. So now, of course, if we were to track the bill, we can go into the business dropdown and we can go into the uh, bill information and we can say the awaiting payment bills is gonna include that bill that we talked about. Now it's in the same kind of section we've been looking at in uh, prior presentations. And we can go from here uh, and pay the bill like we normally would at that point. Let's see what the bill did to the financial statements. If I go to the balance sheet, update the balance sheet, then we're gonna scroll down and say, okay, we should have then inventory. Inventory has been added. There's the $20. Let's go into the inventory. Note that the inventory was not added with the purchase order. As we can see in the detail down here, it was added with, what's this other detail? We've got this 20 right here. This is it. It was added with the bill, which they're calling here a payable invoice, which is a little confusing, but if you get, once you get used to the terminology, You'll, you'll understand what that means because we're in the, the payable. So an invoice in this case means we were billed from the vendor or supplier. Okay, so then, so there's, uh, if I go into that, it'll drill down on the bill. If we needed to edit it for whatever reason, you can hit the drop down and edit. 
and that looks like the same data input screen that we just filled out. Going back, and I'm gonna go back again, and go back again. And so now let's look at the other side of things, which should be in the A to the P accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable going in there. It was a bill, so we should have the bill in there. And so we're gonna say, let's go all the way to the bottom because we're in December here. It should be way down, down, down. And so the bill, there it is. So there's the other side. The other side's going to inventory. No impact on the cost of goods sold because this particular bill we used to purchase inventory. There will be an impact on the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold when we sell the inventory. And if we're using a perpetual inventory system, you would think that would be when we create, for example, an invoice, for example. So let's go, uh, or possibly a receive money, you know, the, when we make a sale, those are the sales type transactions. Let's go back to the balance sheet. So I'm gonna go back. And so that looks good. Now we also have a subsidiary report. So I'm gonna click on the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it, and open up an inventory uh, report, which will give us the, the added level of detail we're getting when we track inventory on a perpetual inventory system within the zero system. So I'm going to go down and say that we want to go to reports. And let's just let's just take a look at this. This one has a inventory detail. Let's just take a look at the inventory item summary. Inventory item summary. So I'm going to go into that as of December. That looks good. And you can see here's the $20 of the purchase of inventory that we had. And uh, we've got a total then of the 340 in inventory at this time. Now it looks like those opening balances here have not been included in the balance sheet. So only the $20 here that we have recorded is being reflected on the balance sheet at this time in inventory. But the general point we want to make here is that if you're tracking the inventory on a perpetual inventory system, then we're going to have to be tracking not only the inventory in terms of dollar amounts at the point of purchase and the point of sale, but we're also going to be having to track the actual units of inventory that we have as well. And that adds a level of complexity in the zero system. Your other option would be, for example, to simply uh, record a periodic inventory system so that when you make the purchase of inventory you might still record it as inventory but you might you might not track the inventory in terms of inventory items within the zero system but rather track it in uh, an, an external system and do periodic adjustments with relation to a physical count you have for the inventory that you do at the end of the day night uh, or months and and do the uh, equation of you know a beginning inventory plus purchases minus the ending inventory to get the cost of goods sold adjustment. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at your inventory, we'll talk more about inventory when we get to the practice problem. But just remember that uh, it, it does add a level of complexity and you want to get the kind of system you have right up front so that uh, it'll run smooth going forward. So if I go to the first tab, just to take a look at the inventory items if I go then to the business dropdown and we look at the products and services, these are gonna be the items that will be set up that help us, I'm gonna hide this, to, to populate the bills when purchasing inventory and invoices, uh, and, and I'm sorry, bills and POs when we're purchasing the inventory purchase orders, as well as the invoices and the sales transactions when we record like an invoice so and notice we use these items down below so if i go into this t-shirt it gives us the quantity on hand the average cost and then uh, the total value and so on for tracking uh, the inventory and then this was put in place just with that opening balance that was put on on the books here for the inventory so it gives us a little rundown of the activity on down below for it. So we'll dive more into setting up these items a lot more in the second half of the course. We'll talk more about them uh, in the future in the first half too, but it, it, you really get a feel for this when you have to set them up from scratch, starting a new 
company file. That's when you really get a, a good feel of how this whole thing works. And we'll do a new company file in the second half of the course.